sorts, maybe all sorts of species. New variations of species, biology, are taking it in a new direction, completely new, new kind of evolution. Nature is still at play there, though. Even when it comes to humans and our regional, you know, yeah, the genes mix, yes. People move to Germany, people move to Africa, Africans move to South America and China. And in, in that respect, we will always be a global species. But still, the gene pools for the majority of people in any given. Uh, region like a continent or a state or a, a town you know a country countries obviously but yes we we keep dividing and yes you know you breed with people in your area uh, for better or for worse a lot of people travel you know take mates from other regions it's, it's really, it's still the same thing. It's the same thing going on that has been going on with other species, everything. You know, you don't just hang around. You, you get that wanderlust. You get that desire to go out, find new people. You grew up with certain people, certain family members. I mean, shit, like, look at, look at some things, some insects and turtles and other species. They never knew family. They don't know what a family is. Even the very concept of a family. It's a whole new thing. And here we are. We're trying to make family everything alive. A member of our family. And it's amazing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you having a good night? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm recording Hi. right Pardon? now. I'm recording a message right now. I'm sorry my hands look cold. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. No, you're I just fine. just to make sure you're doing okay. Yeah, what did you come out here for? I was looking for one of my friends, but I oh. saw you were sitting out here by yourself and I felt bad. Are you doing okay? Yeah. All right. Great. Thank Good. you. Apologize for anybody who have uh, drugged down for uh, for that for that for that thought. Even it may not be biological. It may be completely learned, completely. I might have been. I might be a good person. You know, even with uh, all my defects. I still love, I love being, you know, I like, uh, I like, I like being alive, <coughs> but not enough to fight any of you for it. I don't know if you kill for it. Somebody else kills something. Yeah, sure. I guess that's the type of person I am. Not to say I couldn't change. That's one of the things about having a, a perspective or, I don't know, being a, empathetic towards even murderers, rapists, um, predators, uh, like sharks, 
bacteria, everything. I mean, just life, the way that things function, you know, just everything. Being empathetic with the way that life works in every way means that some of those things that humanity detests, you know, publicly, um, you have to give it a chance, you have to look at it, you have to, you know, consider it. And in so doing, it's, uh, be a hindrance, it can be, um, it can be detrimental to your success, to the type of uh, being with a limited amount of information that you happen to be. Um, you know, it reminds me of the, uh, I think it was a philosopher who said, you know, give me the child, I'll give you the man. take any individual and limit the amount of knowledge that it is aware of, limit the amount of systems you know, that it's aware of, and just give it a sort of one track, you know, narrow its vision down, give it sight, and then all those other distractions uh, never really become a problem. Actually, you get so far away from them by looking back, you're like, yeah, I don't even worry about it. You know, some people um, think uh, the word sociopath comes to mind because you would think that everybody, the majority of people, the hub of the majority of humanity is back in one place. And as soon as somebody gets outside of that, you know, they are free, free of that. And they can look back and they see this hub you know, and there may be branches out in all directions, you know, all directions around where they're going. They can look away from that, and the farther they get out from that, or in that center of humanity, uh, you know, as a perpen person, as a perp with a purpose, you know, that is their drive. Um, oh, now I'm thinking about astronauts getting away from Earth. My goodness. What what are we gonna do? What what will we become? You know, going to somewhere, like Mars for instance, there's going to be a link. You know, you're gonna have these two planets, Earth, Mars. And you're gonna have a link between them. And Earth is going to constantly be informing things that are going on on Mars. And Mars, people on Mars will be making people on Earth aware of what they're doing. Um, and so there's going to be this constant influence, a direct influence that I don't think ever, you know, maybe there will be some uprisings when there's enough people so that Mars can sustain itself. There's enough human beings and enough technology. Maybe, maybe Mars may cut off their ties from the Earth entirely. Like in um, Red Mars... Um, Kim Stanley Robinson's book you know people were just like any any transmission coming um, just ignore it and uh, who knows just wait because eventually Earth will send maybe an invasion force you know trying to reclaim their prospects but who knows people on Mars they may be able to uh, defend themselves much like the Americas um, the United States which I'm thinking of particular here in the uh, Revolutionary War. But, uh, the British decided not to be a member of the British Empire anymore. Maybe Mars will choose not to be a member of the Earth Empire at some point. And if so, more power to them. Eventually I think uh, communication will be reestablished, but under different terms than they were founded. And uh, things will get really interesting. But still, it cannot escape. It will not escape that communication forever. Um, you know, I'm considering uh, this technology. Somebody mentioned uh, mass drivers, seeding, seeding, uh, accelerating, extremely like near light speed, small containers, 
that you can use to seed other worlds from from here on Earth, uh, using the energy from the sun to essentially accelerate a projectile to other worlds, where it will eventually, you know, correct its course and crash land on a world and start small but start creatively with a simple program much like DNA like a single cell you, know, you can't even see it with your naked eye uh, gives rise to a human uh, with the you know, information from another cell which also can see um, so something like that uh, may happen and those those peoples, those uh, beings, those worlds, um, maybe given some sort of programming, uh, maybe not. They may be aware that the Earth is in this direction, they may not be. Uh, maybe there will be both. I, w I would hope, maybe, somebody would make both. Although, for when it comes to the big picture and the ultimate outcome, of the universe and of life and of everything, you know, from uh, Lenny Akea and just this region um, before it expands, um, before you know the universe is torn apart by the expansion of space and time. I hope, I hope that things work out for the best. Um, and they will. I mean, the best is now and then that will be the best I don't see life going backwards much you know there may be a few times a few times where we screw up a few times where we mess up but I don't think it'll be very long hey Bob have a good night yep you too he's a decent guy he's not bad Nobody is. But yeah, we've just begun. Even right now, to imagine what things will be like by that time, um, we know so little. You can imagine so much right now. And that's the good thing about being alive. possibilities and the more that we know the more we can be sure of what will actually come which is better better for life better for us and living organisms like all these living organisms these uh these trees are you here this leaf you know the whole purpose of the DNA and this leaf and the tree that it was a part of to spread those seeds. Um, I mean, look at all these wood chips. Wood chips, leaves. The tree had no idea. I was going to wonder if it had no ideas at all. We have ideas. They have uh, habits. There's some level of distinction. I don't want to uh, discredit any form of life, but it's done what it's done, and it's great. We've lived with it. I'm thankful, you know, for all life. But obviously, we're the ones running the show now. We're the ones doing our thing. We're the ones who can give life to other worlds of life, the seeds, the bacteria that might have been blown around, you know, common impacts and stuff. We could have waited for that, and it might still happen. There is that possibility that we may fuck up so bad that uh, if life is to ever have a future elsewhere in the universe from here, um, it may have to be through some sort of cataclysmic event, some sort of uh, some sort of a catastrophic event. Uh, not even 
Not even. There's got to be a better word. It's getting so gloomy. Some sort of uh, natural, not natural disaster. This is a natural occurrence. A large scale. comets or uh, maybe some other means fling life out elsewhere but no I don't think we'll have to worry about that uh, even if it wasn't humans I think the rest of life has come far enough that if uh, humanity for, for some reason would go extinct that the rest of life would be able to figure it out before either the earth cooled too much or the sun expanded too much and boiled off the planet, the uh, water, or whatever other, you know, I don't know of any other foreseeable events, maybe another planetary collision that might send the rest of uh, life from Earth cascading, spiraling into the sun, and that would definitely It's not impossible, but what is probable, given everything we know right now, is that we're going to continue on, um, seed more worlds, and continue our way out. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, I always wondered about machines, though our offspring, our creations, if, uh, if they may be the ones who we entrust with the responsibility of uh, recreating the universe in their image, uh, as opposed to life and biological organisms. But uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's us or them or something else. That it happens is important, and that it be allowed to happen is important. And that we do what we can to make it happen however possible, as soon as possible, to ensure that you know we snatch up as much as we possibly can. And perhaps, perhaps we run into some other life form somewhere else, some other origin of life. I'm thinking of all life forms from Earth being you know, on the same same family, and there's some other family out there, some other origin, uh, maybe doing the same thing that we're doing, they've already started that process, and they may have been at it for a billion years, you know, and if that's the case, then we got, to, you know, somebody to look forward to beating, a record, you know, if that's what we want to do, or if we want to go the diplomatic route and work with them, um, perhaps, there will be some compatibility between us. I'm not talking about DNA. I highly doubt that. Um, but that's possible. DNA may be a thing. Uh, with genetic engineering, we may be able to uh, figure out something that we can do to sort of contribute to them and they contribute to us and we merge um, much the way that merged a few organisms here on Earth in the past, and giving goats the ability to produce spider silk with their milk. Um, is it goats? I, I don't know, sheep. But um, I think it was a goat. And that protein, you know, giving them a little bit. That's genetic engineering. It's going to make us capable of and it's not just genetic engineering, it's chemical engineering. You know? What if we come across something that isn't even chemical? What if we come across something that is, uh, you know, stored in some other sort of medium, like a hard drive? You know? A machine, maybe it's binary, maybe it's, uh, I say binary, it's, it's our creation, but, you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of other possibilities. 
you know, maybe, maybe what will happen here from Earth as we will, uh, <clears throat> we'll make so many machines that, uh, you know, life will just not be capable of going to other worlds and everything. We will have to entrust that to hardware that isn't so sensitive to the elements, that isn't so sensitive to uh, decay, chemical reactions and whatnot, like a DNA molecule might be. Um, or is it so dependent? That's another thing that's very weak, uh, very soft, squishy. You know, it's a problem with life. We're very uh, acclimated to this, this medium, this biological medium, this, uh, this array of chemistry. Space isn't going to be like that. It's going to be completely different. Uh, we'll take in a lot of other things, but it may not be enough. And we may eventually realize that uh, it's in something greater than life's best interest to let machines or our creations um, be the things. And that may happen multiple times. It may, I mean, for us in the present, we see hardware, we see machines. Machines may see software. The software may see light and electrons, and let's say electrons. You know, it may contain its information in, in an arrangement of electrons. Now, those arrangements.